Bob Coppich, Crotch Yield Geek, author of uh, CEO Survival Guide to Information Technology and the MSP Survival Guide to Co-Managed IT Services. And this is the topic of the webinar you're about to see, which was on uh, Monday, December 9th, 2019. And we're talking about kind of the marketing and sales strategies to use for MSPs talking to uh, potential co-managed IT services or internal IT people. Um, hopefully it'll be useful to you. And uh, we talked specifically about some of the, how do you try to parallel your uh, unique uh, value propositions that you're already hopefully uh, promoting your full MSP services with, parallel that with the COMITs. Similarly, the, the way you do the services, because you don't wanna have two totally different companies inside of your MSP. You wanna try to parallel and uh, match the way you're doing things both for your MSP clients as well as your COMITS MSP clients, COMITS being co-managed IT services. Uh, we also talk about some of the methodologies to create your pricing models, your cost models, and all that kind of fun stuff. And then last but not least, okay, maybe least, uh, is we also talk about a new offering I'm coming out with. Yes, I'm monetizing COMITS. Shoot me. Uh, no, please don't. Uh, we're actually creating a starter kit for organizations to uh, kind of kick off with with uh, campaigns that we've already created, uh, some scripts that we've already used, uh, making use of actually Dave D's uh, program, uh, who I recommend uh, highly, um, and a way to save about 50% off uh, by being an early adopter. Uh, there's information on this as well. If you have any questions, email me, bob at simplex-it.com. And as always, uh, uh, always interested in feedback and all that kind of fun stuff. So, Enjoy such as you can uh, the webinar and obviously give you some comments and feedback and all that fun stuff. Thanks. Okay, uh, I think we're going to get started now. And uh, first of all, thanks all of you for joining in. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get out the reminder that had actually had the connection information and all that kind of fun stuff. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Uh, and let's see. So we'll see where we go from there. Now, we are recording this and we will put this up online in some way, shape or form. Uh, this is actually will be the first time we've actually recorded a Teams meeting that we're gonna be looking. So whether we do it on YouTube or through the Teams distribution or whatever, we'll figure that, we'll figure that out. But we are recording it and uh, we plan on uh, uh, distributing, letting everybody have access to it, whether you attended this meeting or not. We had a, about 150 or so invites to uh, MSPs. So, anywho, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, if you can't hear me, of course, this message is, the audio is pretty useless, uh, but if if you can't hear me, there's a number to call in. It is a uh, U.S. Uh, North American number with a conference ID. I will email everyone the presentation uh, immediately after today, uh, but I will also admit or also uh, email everybody the, uh, the, the link uh, once we get that up and running, so. Unknown and participant is now joining. Here's my uh, contact info and all that kind of fun stuff. The most active one of these right now from as far as the co-managed is the Comets Facebook group. Right now there's about of 150, 160 uh, members and we've had some good conversations. It's still a little bit on the uh, beginning side as far as what people are seeing, but uh, feel free to join in and give some uh, feedback on what's there. What I wanna make sure that Facebook group does not become is just some kind of pulpit for me to go and say, here is my idea of co-managed IT services, because, you know, yeah. So, uh, take a look at all that stuff. And boy, I have my two books on Amazon. Isn't that wonderful? Yay. My third book, which is pretty much done, uh, is actually uh, another MSP uh, uh, guy in my um uh, peer group actually came up with the title is uh, tentatively, I don't want your job. It's co-managed IT services a fit. 
Uh, I just have to put all the pieces together. It'll probably be done by the first week or two in January. This is actually, uh, we're looking to give that to the internal IT person, uh, meaning that uh, it is describing to them whether or not co-managed IT services is a good fit, uh, whether or not it is something that uh, is, is, is appropriate for not only their organization, but, them, but themselves personally. And I wanna stress, Comis is not always a good fit. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, there's nothing worse than a good Comis opportunity that gets away except for a bad one that, that you sign up. Uh, so uh, we'll see where, where this one goes. It's only going to be about 30, 40 pages or so. Um, just finishing that stuff up. Uh, Comis on tour, co-managed IT services is a big there's a lot of vendors who are catching up on it. Uh, Avic this, uh, at Datocon in Paris, uh, about half of their keynote talk uh, in front of about 800 or so uh, European, for the most part, MSPs, about half of Avic's talk was about co-managed IT services. Uh, the, the number of people who are doing this is increasing. I just did a pre presentation to Robin Robbins Producers Club uh, over the on Friday, and there's about 200 or so people in that room. And when I asked how many uh, uh, MSPs are doing it, really about three quarters of them raised their hand. Uh, however, of those three quarters that raised their hand, I then asked the question, okay, are you marketing? Are you selling it? And pretty much everybody's hands went down. Okay, so this is this is where we're trying to be a little bit different. Uh, again, caveats as always, I'm based on my model of commits, co-managed IT services. Uh, it's aimed at the small, medium business, 10 to 250 users. And as always, I'm condescending, arrogant, and all that crotchety stuff, but I take it as well as I dish it out. Okay. We're going to go over pretty much marketing, selling, and delivering, and we are going to talk about some of the stuff that we have most recently added. Uh, so here's one of the key things, and I don't talk about this enough, is when you're talking about creating a relationship between your uh, client uh, and you want to create this co-managed, you have to lead with your value, okay, and your value as it's represented to the potential client. In other words, and we'll talk about this a little more specifically as we go forward, but I think part of the challenge, and this is honestly, this is on me, uh, is we've talked about commits as in your commits versus my commits versus the other guy's commits versus whatever are all going to be the same. And they're, they're, to be true, there really are going to be a lot of similarities here, but we have to make sure that we're not making a cookie cutter product. In other words, it's, it's not one of those... When, when you go to market for your managed, your, your traditional MSP uh, program, um, you're still going to lead with whatever your value is as you want to personify it to the client or potential client because otherwise you're a commodity. And you don't want to be a commodity. The term we use, we're the cool guys. We're the ones who are creating a jerk-free IT environment. So I'm going to lead with a whole bunch of things that we're going to do with our client, whether it's an MSP client, a pure MSP client, or a COMITS client, about how we're going to create a good, warm, and fuzzy relationship. That may work for you. That may not. But one of the things is why do people buy from you? Why do they get the services from you? And how do you translate that to the COMITS? A conversation okay so that's one of the things and that's probably going to be the topic of the next webinar uh, that we do is how do you take your your unique self value proposition and how do you transfer that to the to the comets world because if you don't have that well number one you need that for your for your pure MSP but if you don't have that how are you going to entice them what do you have to offer okay so that's one of the key things that I want to talk up, talk about. Again, co-managed IT services, that's essentially a an ongoing MSP style relationship with an organization that essentially has an internal IT uh, a department of some kind. And we'll talk about the specifics on that. This gets back to the whole, you know, you have a possible client, do they have IT issues? If they don't, it's hard to sell. If they have, if they do, then you have, do they have an IT department? Traditionally, if they had an IT department, we only wanted to replace them. Uh, but now we can basically say, let's build 
let's build a relationship. And that's where pretty much we come from. So this has a relationship. This gets back to this again. And by the way, I'm kind of going over this part a little quickly uh, because we've gone over this before. If, however, anybody has any questions, they're new to this, whatever, just throw it in the chat window because the odds are other people have that question as well. Okay. But it's a relationship. It is absolutely a relationship. It is a relationship. You have to deal with the relationship. Any of you guys know me, you know I'm a relationship. I am so not a relationship oriented person. But in this particular case, you have to build the relationship with the internal IT folks. And by default, they won't trust you because for the last 15 years, MSPs have been going to their bosses and saying, we can replace your internal IT person. We can do a better job. We can do it cheaper. We will, and as part of our assessment, we will expose all the things that they don't do well. Blah, blah, blah. So they're not going to trust you by default, which is why I wrote the third book. Okay, you've got to prove you're, you have that responsibility to prove that you're going to create a relationship of trust. Now, a little background. From what I've seen, based on, because I'm old, uh, there's really five models of IT support for small, medium businesses. And in some cases, it can be a combination of them. But these are, these are one of the five things that you'll run into when you're first talking to a potential uh, COMED slash MSP client. And in some cases, I think it's, it, or I shouldn't say some cases, in most cases, it ain't going to be COMEDs. They may say it's COMEDs, but in actuality, it's one of these other, five, one of these other four. Seagull. This is the one that everybody chuckles at. And pardon my French on this, but it's worth saying. Uh, a Seagull manager or a Seagull vendor, whatever. They come out of nowhere, they squawk, they drop a lot of crap, and then they fly off again. And in a lot of cases, organizations, even with small IT departments, are dependent upon an, a, what we call a seagull vendor. And the seagull vendor essentially is the vendor who they'll bring in because they don't have the skills, they don't have the time. They bring in, they fix it, they collect their money, and they leave. And often, without actually training the internal IT people on how to support how to manage, how to monitor whatever that new technology was. And this happens over and over again. This is the most common scenario we see when an internal IT department is dependent upon some external vendor. It's, it's, a, it's a seagull. Now, here's the nuance thing. Refer to them as seagulls. It, yeah, it's a little bit derogatory. Yeah, it it, it basically minimizes. Because there's actually some seagull relationships that are great. They're appropriate, and they do the skills transfer. But this way, you just refer to them as your seagull. And they're always going to get that metaphor of flying in out of nowhere, dropping the crap, and flying away. Okay, now, here's the thing. They're not being paid to stick around. So don't turn it into, and they're cheap. You know, or they're ridiculously expensive. Talk about the service. Talk about the situation they leave the internal IT people in. Okay. Silo support. This is where we see a lot of MSPs who are kind of doing it uh, as a co-managed. And this is certainly true with some of the vendors who are doing the MSSP, you know, uh, managed security services provider, where they'll basically come in and they're only going to be dealing with this one aspect of the IT world. So they're only doing backups. They're only doing security. They're only doing firewalls. They're only doing monitoring. Okay. The nice thing about this is to do, to offer that service, the, 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 the place to, the bar is much lower than a, a true commits as we'll get into, but it's also much lower to be replaced. So it's more or less a commodity. And the commodity doesn't necessarily put you in a wonderful relationship with the internal IT people because you're doing the firewall, they're not. You're not helping them on anything outside of the firewall. They're not involved with what you do on the firewall because it's siloed. That makes it much easier to implement and much easier to deliver the services, but it also makes it much easier to be considered a commodity and much easier to be replaced and much easier to not have the relationship that actually creates the stickiness. Okay. 
and I can I, I can tell you in, in more than one occasion we ran into companies that were because if you've been into the M we've been in MSV for about twelve years and I remember about eight or ten years ago the word was hey you should do monitoring only because that's the way you get your foot in the door and once you've got that then you'll be the person who blah 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 and every commits potential commits client we've talked to that has had a monitoring only agreement there's probably been two or three of them have always said. We have no idea why we have monitoring. We get these alerts. We don't know what the alerts are, or we don't get any alerts. And when we ask what we should do about it, they immediately, the vendor wants to charge us more money to fix it or to, even to, to diagnose it or dive deeper into it. And they were never trained on how to use it in the first place. So we've yet to see somebody who really says, yay, monitoring only worked for us. Okay. So... Then getting into the configurations of the organization's internal IT, first of all, and again, remember we're talking in the small, medium business, so usually we're talking anywhere from one to three internal IT people. Uh, first of all, we've got the one-man shop. Uh, that's the person who is supposed to do everything, know everything, be all to end all, all of that kind of fun stuff, which usually means one of two things. Either one, that person is overworked and burned out and doesn't know it, and they've got a couple of uh, they got a couple of um, seagulls, and if the seagulls ever disappeared, they were they'd be doomed. Uh, the second we also see the second kind of that is where someone is a, a miracle standing. Uh, that's basically where they are able to do everything almost magically, but if everything is done not fully, not best practice. So it's done very cheaply, very quickly, and if they're, they're one bad day away from a complete and total catastrophe. Uh, Batman and Robin are interesting. That's where you have a senior person who basically does all of the big ticket items, the big stuff, kind of a CIO uh, wannabe sort of thing. And then you have one person who's doing all the grunt work and there's a chasm of skills and uh, knowledge between the two of them. Uh, then we have the missing skills and vertical. Uh, that's where they really, really know how to deal with desktops. They have no clue how to deal with servers. Uh, you know, as an example, uh, and we also have the wasted value. The wasted value, that's where you have a person who's supposedly responsible for the internal IT, but if they weren't working on that as much, they would they would be able to bring in a ton of revenue to the organization because of their knowledge. And we've had clients where we talk to them and they have an internal IT person who could be billing out to their clients at, you know, 150, 200 bucks an hour, uh, but they have to work on somebody's printer, you know, so that's kind of what we see in the opportunities. Again, commits is relationship really we're, we're instead of delivering the message of we're making the company better in terms of it, we basically involve the internal it and in how we will as a team, we want to have flexibility and it is about relationships. Now the simplistic, and again, just remind you guys, if you have any questions or whatever, throw them into the uh, uh, chat room or the chat chat room. God, am I dating myself? Um, we're partnering. We'll split responsibilities depending upon the organization. Now, here's the thing. We're giving them the framework and our tools, uh, monitors, procedures, software systems, all that kind of fun stuff. We're giving them all the stuff that we use. So they're going to use that on their day-to-day. -day. We're kind of making them an extension of our IT by giving them all that, including the training, and vice versa. We're an extension of theirs. They're an extension of ours. Yay, life is good. Uh, we also, as part of the monthly service, we're giving advice and tips. So if they have issues, they have a question, they want to know, should they go this way or that way, they can ask us for advice, tips, devil's advocate, you know, here are the alternatives. We will do that till the cows come home without charging them additional money. That way it's not just a monitoring only. We're re-engaging with them. We're helping them. We're supporting them. We're adding value to them individually as internal IT people. Okay, they're not feeling abandoned by the seagulls. But if they want us to do the work, they'll escalate the ticket and we'll add additional. It becomes time and material. Okay, which means they're the ones who decided something was going to be an additional billing. No surprises on the billing moments. Okay, plus we also say, okay, you want us to do this? Do you want to watch? Do you want to get a better feel for how you should do it if this comes up again? We'll document it any way you want it, but that way we're not only saying, hey, we got more money, 
we're also giving them an opportunity to make it so that they won't get billed for that same thing again. Services, tools, methodologies, and portals. It's what we call stamps. This is just an example of the stamps that we have. Your array of tools that you use will be different. Okay, will potentially be different. Matthew, if you provide them access to your RMM tool, what is to prevent them to go directly to the RMM vendor? Your value. It really comes down to all of these things. If you simply look at this as a commodity share, meaning that you've got these tools and you're going to give access to the tools and then stand back and go use the tools, you're absolutely right. Nothing's going to prevent them. So the question is, and, and by the way, it's not just the RMM tool. It's the security tool. It's the firewall. It's the this. It's the that. In most cases, especially, and this is why it scales well for the SMB market, they don't have the time to A, select these tools, B, configure these tools, C, learn these tools, not to mention that every one of these tools are going to go through some kind of upgrade over the next year or so. So, And you want to sell that. You don't want to sell these tools. Because if you sell these tools, you're a commodity. You want to sell their productivity over using the tools and your ability to support them and take and take care of by using the tools. Okay? You never sell the tool. You know, it's kind of like uh, what they've said as far as some of the uh, marketing 101. Nobody buys a drill. They buy a hole. You know, you don't want anyone to buy your RMM. You want them to buy the fact that now they've got a partner a pre-configured network monitoring and a partner that understands their network that can help them when need be. Because Dell isn't going to provide that. None of the RMM tools are going to provide that. Nobody's going to provide that except you because of the way you approach it. This is why we're not seagulls. We're not silos. We're comets. Does that make sense? I'm going to assume it does. Unless you type otherwise. So, Benefits, risks, should, shouldn't. You can see these bullet points, not going to go in these in specifics. But we that absolutely, we don't sell the stamps as those are the things that we're providing. We're providing the results through the use of those stamps and through our expertise. So if, so for example, we spent Simplex IT, because we're idiots, I, excuse me, we're brilliant, uh, we decided to make changes both to our backup. Uh, we went from uh, eFolder slash StorageCraft over to Datto, and we went from Managed Workplace slash Level Platforms over to Datto RMM. We did that. We did the reviews. We did the implementation. We did the migration. We did all of that stuff. None of our clients need to. Okay? So they don't have to go searching. And again, remember, when we're talking SMB, SMB doesn't have time. They don't have time to go look for this stuff. They don't know what the latest and great, but that's part of our job. So the strength. In our case, we don't do long-term commitments. Um, we're flexible, no finger pointing. And this is especially true for the internal IT people. Whatever the problem is, whatever the issue is, we're going to work together to figure it out. And we can figure this stuff. And depending upon how you want to, whether or not they've got a CIO, in which case it's more of a it's more of a coaching them, or they want whatever, you could do it. And we have collectively 50 years of consulting. You have whatever you, the, the sum total of your people are. We can help you, especially with the dealing help helping the internal IT people deal with management. You know, we've all been in that situation where you've been telling the You've been telling your boss, the sky is blue, the sky is blue, the sky is blue, and they're like, yeah, whatever. Consultants comes in out of nowhere, charges $5,000, says, did you know that the sky is blue? And the, the, the boss looks at you and goes, well, why didn't you tell us this? They're so smart. You can tell that story to just about every internal IT person. They'll chuckle and go, yeah, that happens. And you basically go, well, every time we make those kind of recommendations, you're going to hear it first and you'll be part of the presentation are we doing month to month for agreement term yep yeah we we again gets back to why because of our, our because of our value proposition we want to be the cool guys we don't want to be the cool guys because of the fine print we want to be the cool guys because of the value that goes both ways so either party can go to the other party and say it's not working or it's working great or we need to make adjustments or we need to do whatever 
we've been that way since day one, and it's it's worked well for us. And again, that's not to say you should. You have to take a look at your organization, figure out what the strengths of your organization is, and then basically copy that over to the Comets world so you can duplicate on both sides. Because you don't want to have you don't want to have two ways of doing business. That's that, that internally that's going to be a pain in the butt for you. A bad Comets prospect. If you get the feel and it happens that they're looking at you as an adversary uh, or or impediment, that's the biggie. That's the biggie. The other points are kind of there, but bottom line is if they're basically saying they want you to buy into their ways, their best practices, all of that, and the only thing about their best practices that make them best is because they're their best practices, not yours. So, like, we've got, we're we're talking with two organizations right now, and they're both relatively, uh, basically, newer management and then the IT people operating underneath them. And they both are looking at change. And and it's it's really interesting. Uh, in one case, uh, in both cases, they're relatively healthy, but they're looking for expansion, they're looking for growth, and they're looking at the COMITS model. In one case, what they're, what they're looking to do is they're looking to take their, their IT person and get them more into the business development side, which means that we would be great. Um, Randy, I'll get to your, your question in a second. Uh, and and so they're looking for more development. And this guy has some really good processes, but some of them are basically what we do, but we do them differently. In which case, we want to do them our way because that's how we economy of scale. Uh, but he's got some processes that we don't do owing to the nature of their business. We'll adapt to those because they make sense for his business. So we're making... And we're probably going to be, you know, somewhere around ten grand uh, a month, and it's pretty much all decided. It, it's all but signed. Uh, then we got another client, potential client, who is kind of in almost the exact same boat, except in this particular case, their IT person is pretty darn sure he did the right thing for everything. And that one scares the bejeebers out of me. And that one's one I'm going to be willing to walk away from, even though the IT director is like, can you help me? And part of his his goal is to help me kind of coach or educate this IT person to be a little more open to the outside world. So I look for that. I want to know, again, I want to know a bad Comets prospect before we sign up because we're looking to increase the stickiness. Stickiness isn't always a good thing insert whatever appropriate or inappropriate thought you want to for yourself. So have we looked at presenting marketing COMIT services to companies looking to hire additional IT staff? Absolutely. Especially we've looked at it in a couple of cases. One, uh, Randy, is the situation where they are looking to replace IT staff. Uh, we had a Batman Robin situation where uh, the client, um, uh, essentially the Batman left and Robin was left alone. And uh, we came in and pitched Comets, and uh, they've been with us for about eight months or so. And the Robin guy, he's, he's like ecstatic because the Batman, the former Batman was a good guy, but he never shared any of his, what he did or how he did it or whatever. Whereas we're going, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's the tools. Here's what you can learn. Look over our shoulders, see what you've got. So he's, he's thrilled uh, and, and has, has bought into the Comets hook, line, and sinker. Um, and the company is paying less than they were paying for this full-time person, plus all of the tools that they kind of hobbled together, and the tools are much better. So, wow, win, win, win. That's what you want. We win. The IT person wins. The company wins. Now, in a case where they're looking to hire additional staff, I would say it kind of depends um, if they're looking to hire, if they're looking to expand and uh, it, it kind of depends on how's that how's that relationship going to be cemented. So if you have like a situation where they're going to be expanding and doing a lot more a lot more on the servers or the desktop side, um, are you looking to make those individual employees more productive so that they don't have to or a split? Okay, yeah, okay. So you're monitoring ZipRecruiter and Indeed. We tried that. And the problem is, is that nine times out of 10, when we posted to ZipRecruiter or indeed job postings, we would get um, people, we would get the HR person. So I, I really would love to hear if that's working for you. 
I would also add LinkedIn to that because there's a lot of people who are who are finding LinkedIn uh, a place for uh, for IT hiring. Cool. Now, bad commits MSP. If was bad for the goose, could be bad for the gander. If you can't look at the IT person as adversary or as impediment, in other words, there. If you if you look in a condescending, arrogant, you know, we're always we should be replacing you, but reluctantly we'll do this commits thing because some idiot named Coppage said it was a great idea. Uh, you got to look at this as a team. And also, if your arrangements are extremely detailed, if you live by the fine print, because there's got to be some give and take. Uh, and also if it's your way or the highway, and what I mean by this is your way or the highway in the sense that if you have the best practice and you're going to do the exact same thing as they're doing, but it's your way of doing it and you're the one responsible, absolutely. I think your way, or the highway, I'd phrase it differently, but that makes sense. But if they have things that they do because of the nature of their business, because of the nature of their clients or whatever, you have to be open to working with them. And absolutely, if you need to absorb uh, things that they require you to do, you should be paid for it uh, and vice versa. So, and then finally, if you can't open your tools to your customers, which sounds dirty, uh, but if you can't basically open your stamps and open them at least to the level necessary for them to do their job, okay? Um, then, then it, it isn't going to work for you because you're basically kind of forcing yourself into being a silo um, without actually saying you're a silo, or worse, you're being a an occasional seagull. You know, so careful on that. This is some of the marketing stuff we've got that we've had. Um, yeah, this is kind of old stuff, but it's it's there. Uh, we also talk about the invites uh, that we did. There's a sample postcard. Here's what we just did recently. And actually, Patty is on this call, who is the marketing director here. So, Patty, if you want to pipe in with any chatter or noise uh, about stuff that I say wrong, because, you know, I'm going to say it wrong. We did our. (laughs) So we did our first Comets breakfast event, and I'll talk about how we're going to be doing this moving forward. Uh, and this is actually the uh, this is our our office building, which we are in the basement. So it shows you how how important we are. Uh, but it has a meeting room, and this is the meeting room. And this is actually the first Comets Breakfast event that we put on. Uh, Patty and her people did a great job of uh, getting putting this together. And here's the topic. Now you'll notice Comets isn't in the name. Okay, three ways to solidify your IT without consultants. So what we did was we basically said, we want to draw people. We looked at that whole uh, MSPs just try to take your job thing. And we take that very, very, very seriously. So we made made this event. So we're all about adding value. If the person comes and attends uh, this about hour long presentation with another hour for a a continental breakfast kind of thing, um, you're going to walk away with ways to improve your job regardless of whether you talk to us anywhere beyond this or not. So that was the title of it. We also made sure that we had quotes from existing Comets companies. Okay, and I think we've got three in the presentation. This is just one of them. So how does this work? Whoops. So... First of all, we take three topics, and the three topics are documentation. What are the three things that they can do that will make a better job? And we're not going to make it technical. One, improve your documentation. Okay? We all know, especially for small IT organizations, small IT departments, they do not have the time to document. So we talk about some simple ways they can do it. They don't have to make huge projects. And it's basically one of those, if you just spend a little bit of time and standardize and blah, blah, blah. Okay. The second thing, identify your single points of failure. If you just have a list of here are the things that if these individual things break, you're going to have a significant interruption of business and communicate to the management. Fairly simple ways to, to identify that stuff. 
and also identify whether there's easy ways to get around that or to fix them. And the third is how to improve your relationship with management. Does management treat you as an annoyance? Are you a cost center? Are you the guy? Are you the janitor with blinking lights? Okay. What are some things you can do to improve your standing so your organization takes you more seriously? Now, all three of those things are not commits specific. All three of those things are specifically about how can we easily make your life better? And all three of those things, they can walk away from that meeting and do those things without us. Okay? So, is that a, and you want to talk with us because we'll make sure you, no, it is exactly the opposite. It is, we want to make sure you understand we're here to help. And we want to have this kind of giving relationship. That's what we do. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you quotes from people who like us. I'm going to tell you some examples of how this works. And I'm also going to give you some tools that you can walk away and use. All right. Now, something like this, your mileage may vary depending upon, remember we talked about your value proposition, however you want to do your value. Okay. But at the end of this, at the end, end of this meeting with about five ten minutes left we offer this i want to i'd like a 45 minute meeting at my office and we're going to discuss what you got your situations your challenges not our stuff it's about you not us and i'll answer any questions you have about your unique so it's kind of that next step and at the end of our time you'll have this these actions. So you're going to have some additional action items as far as what to do for documentation. You'll know how to, you know, basically those three things and some template documents so you can get moving on it. And then the last part, we'll talk about, are there any roles? We'll introduce our co-managed or co thing, and we'll see if it's a good fit. So I'm not pretending that I'm not going to sell you something because I'm going to try to sell you something but I'm going to give you value first. I'm going to try to improve your life first. I'm going to try to then, if you'll meet with me, I'm going to improve your life even more so. And then I'll tell you about our services. Now, this is our approach. Your mileage may vary. And if you've got a strong value proposition, arrange this type of thing around that proposition. So that you can basically say, yeah, we're looking to do, we're really about the security. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave you with some tools that you can do about security uh, so that you've got some uh, metaphorical tools so that you can explain to management uh, why a, you know, a, a door propped open is not necessarily the best firewall, you know, that kind of thing. However you want to slice it, but you see the goal, you see the process that we're using. Now, did it work? So we did it one in November, um, and it was based on Dave D's. And Dave D is a uh, marketing sales guy, and he has a pretty good program about developing uh, these these breakfasts, uh, both from a marketing the breakfast, and then how to add value and all that. And it was based on his program. Uh, just giving him a, 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 a shout out for that. And it's all about giving value and building trust. That's what we wanted. Now we had 15 attendees ballpark. And we basically said we're going to uh, we'll, we'll sign up for that next step meeting or whatever. We had five signups for the next steps. Two of them actually were monitoring only clients because we were facing monitoring only. We want to upgrade them to commits, uh, but we're afraid kind of like the whole break fix over to over to uh, uh, RMM or excuse me, MRR. Uh, and so we're doing that, and it looks like that's going to go with the additional 4K. Uh, we've got one process review, and then we've got uh, two other companies, one of which I don't think is going to happen, anything. Uh, and the other one is is uh, work in progress. And then we also had somebody else who has, uh, since I actually last updated this, who said, yeah, we want to do something, some review stuff uh, in January, so call us. So... Um, definitely worthwhile, and the event cost us uh, well under a thousand dollars. When I'll send that, probably closer to under five hundred bucks, as far as all of our costs. Now, so what we're doing is we're going for each quarter. Uh, 
we do three things or we're doing three events every quarter first uh, month of each quarter we're doing what we call our quarterly client training that's another topic if you ever want to learn about that that's our client only uh where we teach them how to how uh, to use some of our tools uh the second month each quarter we're going to do a comets breakfast and the third uh we're going to do a cybersecurity breakfast for anybody client or not so every month we're doing these three things rinse lather repeat or every quarter we're doing these three things monthly. And then in addition to this, we're doing um, monthly uh, uh, marketing pieces. We're doing a lot of direct mail. And the direct mail is, now here's the question or here's the challenge, is when we do marketing or we do direct mail, who do we direct mail to? Well, the answer to that is I have no idea because I don't know who you know. So when we talk about list cleaning and you think about it, you, you're either going to try to reach out to the CEO or the IT director or IT resource. Okay. Well, and if you reach out to the IT resource, well, you better go commits because they're not going to really like the MSP proposition with an exception. Whereas if you go to the CEO, it gets to the question of, well, do you like your IT or not? And the problem is with all the list cleaning that we've done, and we, we've spent a fair amount of time on list cleaning, and by the way, you got to clean your list, we can't really get nailed down effectively the do you have an IT department, and if so, do you like them? And so it's really hard because originally we were approaching, and Patty and I spent a, a fair amount of time, well, okay, Patty spent a fair amount of time on it. I just, I ordered her around. No. Um, we spent a fair amount of time of how do we, because it would be great if we could identify, let's push comments to these folks and let's push pure MSP to these folks, but we couldn't do it with any kind of, of a consistency. And the problem is, is that if you lead with comments and you talk to the internal IT person about comments, you're stuck because you can't turn that over to a, oh, you're not competent, we don't like you, whatever, so we're going to go approach your boss about um about uh, doing a pure MSP because that's bad karma. There's just no way around it. It will, especially if you're just starting to get off your butt and, and get the comments thing going, that's good. That's going to come off and bite you in the butt. If you get the reputation that you're someone who will use the comments angle to get in and to learn about the IT and then replace it with an MSP. Are there circumstances where that might be necessary? Um, could be, but uh, the other thing is, if you start with the MSP, but it turns out Comets is great, fantastic. Because think about it, you're actually starting with a big ticket item because Comets, our pure MSP is more expensive than Comets. But because, based on what they're telling you, you're willing to, to bring it down somewhat and to basically say, no, we're going we're gonna to go with a smaller option because you've already got the solution. You've already got part of your solution there and you're getting some of the value out of it. Okay. By the way, Randy, see you're going, yeah, uh, I talked with Dave a bit about this, uh, doing it and all that, and yeah, I like, I, I did not expect to, but I liked his program. Uh, it, it, well, for us in this particular case, it worked. So overall marketing, by the way, we are also starting, and by we, I mean Patty, uh, to really do some focused uh, LinkedIn stuff, and LinkedIn marketing for comments is, I think, going to be much easier than LinkedIn marketing for traditional MSP. Uh, ask us again in about three or four months. Um, but as we're marketing, it's more important to get the uh, uh, the, the IT folks interested than the, CE, than the CEO. Uh, the metaphor I use to talk about that is your uh, ham and eggs breakfast. When it comes to the involvement, uh, you know the the for the ham and eggs breakfast, the chicken is involved, the pig is committed. Uh, IT people absolutely are going to take what happens to their lives and jobs a lot more seriously than CEOs. And we already talked about the go from a full MSP to commits. Uh, and you got to push the concept, making things better for everybody. Everybody wins. And then use FUD. Use fear, uncertainty, and doubt sparingly. It's okay when you're looking to replace everything and everybody. It is okay to go in and basically say you have a horrible network. Oh, my goodness. You don't have, you have lousy backups. Oh, my God. The only way you're going to survive is us coming in and saving the day. And actually, I don't care for that too much. 
but it's tough to do that if you're also bad mouthing the person you're looking to partner up with. So you need to be careful that you're creating a narrative that explains why some of the things are and you're there to make them better. So of course you have lousy backups. You have this one person who has to do everything at the same time, and there's no way that she can be an expert on backup and, and business continuity at the same time she's supposed to know why Windows 7 should be replaced and also yada, yada, yada. Okay, that way you're talking about the reality, but you're not assigning blame of the, to, the, uh, to anybody for that reality. Absolutely critical. When you're selling it, prepare, prepare for the longer sales cycle. Absolutely. I would say double uh, what we see for commits. Buy-in with IT is critical. you got to know the direction of the relationships, um, yada, yada, yada. So I'm not going to go too much in details. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Pricing it. Pricing it, it needs to, and again, it's kind of like what I was saying for the value proposition. You want... To, to parallel your normal pricing model. And really it depends on the costing, not the pricing. And reason being is because again, okay, Jim, start with MS, but buy in with the, right, little confused by what you're recommending. That's okay, I'm confused myself. Start with MSP, but buy in with IT is the way to, is the way to start. I'm saying is, is you need to switch over to the IT person as fast as you can. Okay, so if you start, so let's say the CEO says, all right, yeah, we want to talk to, uh, we want to talk to you, uh, Simplex IT or whomever you are, uh, about your MSP model, you know, or your COMITS model. And essentially, you then want to engage the IST. You start with, if you're starting with the CEO, you basically start asking questions about, okay, what are the challenges you're seeing with your current IT department? Uh, do you feel uh, that they are bringing value to your organization that you want to maintain, or are you looking to completely replace them? Uh, and you want to dance around this a little bit uh, based on the fact that you don't want to come in and say, so do you think your IT sucks? And you also don't want to come in and say, hey, we want to absolutely partner with your IT person because they may turn around and say either, A, hey, our IT is absolutely fantastic, we love them, or hey, our IT is absolutely horrible. We want to get rid of them. That's why we're talking to you. You get a feel from the management. If you are talking in the, initially with IT, then unfortunately you're kind of stuck with the with the commits because they're the ones who brought you in. Um, but with the, with the management, you can kind of lead with the MSP, but leave commits as an option. So one of the things that we've done, uh, and this is with Robin's materials, uh, Robin Robbins, is we use we have a marketing piece that is specifically aimed at the CEO. It is aimed at uh, hey, uh, we're, we can do a great job with your IT, with taking it over, all that kind of fun stuff. But we then have both in the in the envelope uh, on the letter, we basically say hey, if you have an internal IT department and want to look at options, open the separate envelope. And we include, and it's a, you know, eight and a half by 11 envelope. We include a smaller envelope and it says open if you have internal IT resource or people. Uh, and it's a letter specifically to the IT person that says, hey, commits could be uh, good for you. Um, unfortunately, since you're coming from the outside in and you don't have a 100% accurate view of how everything's go, you're, you run the risk of being two MSP when you should be more comets or two comets when you want to be MSP. Start with the be more MSP uh, because you can switch over to comets unless you're talking to the IT person, in which case then start with comets because, you know, they're, you, 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 you leave with the girl you brought to the dance. Jim, does that make sense? And if it does, could you explain it to me? Okay. So the pricing, again, let's talk about costing. The issue with costing, when you take a look at all of the costs, a commits and an MS, a pure MSP client are going to cost you exactly the same in terms of your licenses and your product because you're using them throughout the entire organization in both cases. So your uh, BCDRs are going to be the same. Your uh, monitoring costs are the same, your Ovid costs, your dark web costs, your AV, all of that stuff is going to be the same. 
all right? The only difference is the amount of time that your technicians are going to spend with that client. And let's just, we're just going to talk about what we call full commits. And again, this is going to be another topic. Uh, full commits is where the IT, the internal IT folks are responsible for everything and they will just escalate things to you if they need the help. In which case, you take a look and you have to figure out, and you should already know this to some degree, what the cost of your technician's time, their resource is for a client, whether it's workstation-based or device-based or user-based or server-user, whatever. You should have a way of doing that. You then take that cost and you discount it heavily or take the price that you would have for that uh, and you discount it heavily. And you discount it by, let's say, uh, I would say somewhere between 75 and 85%, depending upon how much, and this is really for A, you operating or managing these tools in the background, and B, for you answering any of the questions or when they just want to get a, you know, a, a, a warm and fuzzy feeling, just calling for advice. So you want to basically get paid for that time, but you want to build into their to your monthly. We usually then provide here's your what we would uh, uh, price for a full MSP, and here's your your comments discount. So look, your internal IT people are saving you money. Well, actually, they're not, but we'd say they are. Um, so the really key thing is, is your technician's time that, and you just discount that you don't, you don't remove it entirely because again, you're, you're making sure the tools still run and you're also answering advice questions and the like. Okay. And again, this is going to be another topic down the road. These are three models of commits that we've used. We've got clients on each of these uh, workstation, and we, we phrase it based on what they're responsible for. So workstation commits uh, will handle the servers and infrastructures. They handle the workstations, uh, mobile devices, and end user stuff, okay? Which means we automatically track tickets accordingly to their part of the PSA, depending upon what the type of product it is. Server commits is the reverse. They'll handle the workstations and end users. We'll handle the servers and, or excuse me, we'll handle the, <laughs> for server COVID, they'll handle the servers and infrastructures, we'll handle the workstations and end users, and then full commits, they'll handle everything. Now, in all three cases, the, the IT techs can escalate. And by escalating, they can also say, we're going on vacation next week, can you guys handle tickets? Okay, you just escalated everything. Or can you keep an eye on things and handle anything that seems serious? Either one of those is fine. But we've got an understanding. There are They can now take vacation, where in some cases they could not do that. Okay. That's our, our method of costing it. Here's, again, this, the stamps that we use. Don't forget training. This is actually a picture of our first... Uh, two-day Comets training event. We did that about three, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and we, it was free. So we offered for the Comets IT people, uh, and there's three of, there's my tech director and two level three techs who were involved, and the rest of them are all the technicians who came in. And we basically spent two days of hands-on training for the RMM, the PSA, the backups, the server, you know, the, the antivirus, all of that kind of fun stuff uh, where we walk through everything. We also set up uh, uh, a Teams uh, channel specifically for them. Uh, we're also going to be kicking off a webinar series in January. So we're going to do small little like 15 minute webinars on some of the additional techni technical stuff that we're doing. So they now know that we are there with them and for them. Okay. We also want them to talk to each other. We want them to share what works and what doesn't work amongst themselves. So we're building that community. Why? Because they're alone. This makes it so they're not sticky. 
So the ticketing process is fairly straightforward. Tickets received, whether it's generated by an end user, is generated by the RMM tool or by some of the third party stuff, whatever. If it's covered by the MSP, which we talked about just as far as what model, you know, workstation, server, comets are full, uh, then we just work on it. It's a ticket to our service board and we take care of it. Uh, if no, can the internal IT person handle it? If yes, they go and work it, work it as a ticket or an issue for themselves and yay, it's done. If no, they come back to us for advice. And if the advice works, they go work it. And if the advice doesn't work or they need more help, they can escalate it, in which case we work. We handle it and it's automatically additional billable. Fairly straightforward. But it's straightforward because they're using our stamps. It's straightforward because they know what they can do, they can't do. It's all in their hands based on how they want to deal with it. Comets opportunities, these are all things that most of the Comets clients aren't, especially in the smaller, the SMBs. They don't have the time to deal with a lot of this stuff, or they don't have the expertise, or they don't have the desire, they don't have whatever. And then all of the projects, all of the upgrades, when we talk about TBRs or QBRs, whatever you want to call them, all of those processes now take on added value because we've already got somebody there. We've already got somebody who is into that stuff. Matthew wants to know, do you outsource any of the services to a third party at this point, like help desk? At this point, the answer is no. The one thing that scares the hell out of me, Matthew, is commoditization. And to me, as soon as you, ask, as soon as you uh, outsource any of the things that involve human interaction, you have just turned that into a commodity. And that's the one thing I, I cannot, you know, <laughs> I can't write an antivirus program but I can make sure that our clients are treated well by our technicians and are treated very specifically based on what they need and how they need it. So to me, at this point, I don't see, and this would be true like for, for guys who are either using the help desk or members of the 20 or whatever, I'm not a thousand percent sure how well this model will work for you guys. And, and that's just to say, and, and, and that's not to say it can't be done and not to say that commits or co-managed IT service isn't there. It's just my vision of it, my version of it would definitely have some caveats. Okay. So uh, the next steps, um, like I say, first of all, and actually I should put this up, something here. You really have to have that what's the value. What's the, what's the value that you guys lead with and how can you take your Comets offering and really kind of focus it on the value that you, you lead with? And, and this is not specifically because you need this, and we're running a little bit late, but I'm going to try to wrap up in the next five minutes. You need this whether you're going for MSP business or co-managed business. You need to be able to say, we're different from those other guys. And if the answer is, we're different because we're, quali we, we're, we're concerned about quality, bull. That's lazy. You, you don't have a value. What is the value? What is the thing that makes you unique? What is the thing that a client is going to make a differentiation between you and somebody else other than price? And to a certain degree, other than the third-party product that you're bringing in, because uh, somebody pointed out earlier, why don't they just go to the RMM, you know, or the AV vendor or the whatever. So, um, so that's your first step, I think. That's your first step. So, doing the webinar, in case you didn't know. So, here's the sales pitch from me. Okay, this is, and I pointed out something I was doing uh, in in Facebook. I. I gave a warning that I was going to be coming out with this. Uh, first of all, I am still going to be doing these webinars on occasion. I will still make these free and available. I am still going to be doing the Facebook group. I am still going to be speaking at places. I will still be absolutely accessible for questions and all of that uh, because that's critical. But if you want to take this to the next level and you are a lazy person like me, um, we have basically putting out together a COVID starter kit. And uh, essentially, like I say, you don't need this. If, if you read the book or you just get this concept and you take it yourself, you can implement this in the, the shape or form that you want to. Uh, but we've already done this and it's taken us two years. Uh, you can basically take on take a uh, uh, pin from us. Um, and we're basically we're doing a 50 percent discount for early adopters. 
Um, and essentially some of the stuff that's included will be autographed copies of my first two books and then 20 copies of my newest book, the I Don't Want Your Job book. This is a book again, and it's written so that, yes, yeah, Simplex IT is used occasionally uh, for some of the examples, but it is not written as a call Simplex IT now book. It is written more for a person who wants to know whether or not they should take over uh, or they should they should uh, uh, consider a commits uh, model for their for their IT stuff. So you get 20 copies of that. Plus you'll be able to additional order additional copies for like 50% off list price. Uh, it's going to be like a 15.95 book. Um, you'll also have two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching from me. Okay, so it's not all good news, uh, but in 30 minute, and I strongly recommend you do the 30 minute, not try to do everything at once. Uh, but where we can go over and uh, basically coach on what you're doing. I'm also going to be putting together some specific videos on comments as far as my model goes. Uh, and then the, the thing that we talked about for that we did for the breakfast, we will include our voicemail scripts, the mailing pieces, uh, the uh, emails, uh, the, ma yeah, the mailing pieces, the, the PowerPoint presentation, uh, all of that kind of fun stuff, as well as instructions on how to use it and instructions on how to uh, uh, make it yours, it, because it shouldn't be exactly what we did. You should you should basically uh, uh, create it to so it follows your value proposition. So all of that's included, plus some other pieces, parts. Um, the list price at this point is planned for a thousand bucks. It it may be a little bit more or less than that, but I think it's probably going to be a thousand. Uh, and then for the next year, you'll get, automatically get additional updates. We will be, you know, and it's basically when we do something, if it works well, we'll then put together some documentation and share it. Uh, like I said, we're investing a good amount of money and uh, effort into LinkedIn. We'll let you know how it works. Uh, we'll also be probably videotaping our next presentation, and that's one, our next breakfast presentation, and that's one I will not make public. Because it's it's uh, that's just showing too much of what we do, but I will make it as part of the membership here, so you can see what we do. Um, I am creating what I'm calling a beta list. That's basically if you want a 50% discount. So if it ends up being a thousand bucks, as I suspect it will, it'll only cost you 500 bucks, uh, and there's no commitment. So I'm not asking for money now. I'm not even asking for you absolutely to commit to it. I'm just putting together a list of 50 people, uh, and then once we're about ready. I'll then send out to those 50 people the kit, everything, give me some feedback over a couple of weeks or whatever, and then, uh, we'll, then we'll release it to everybody else. Um, so far, and I only announced this privately to about 15, 20 people. We've got about 10 people signed up so far. Uh, beta testers, I'm limiting this group to 50. Again, no, you do not have to buy this. All right. If you choose, if, if by the time January rolls around, you don't want to do it or you realize what an idiot I am uh, and I've done everything I can to prove that um, don't have to do it. Uh, am I going to create any uh, Infusionsoft campaigns with Robin? Robin and I have talked, Robin and I have talked about this a couple of times and I'm told that she's going to be going into the commits uh, and all that. It just hasn't started yet. Uh, but absolutely. I, there, Robin's campaigns can be modified over to comments. No question about it. Chandler is now exiting. So if you want to be a beta tester, email bob at simplex-it.com. Just let me know. Uh, I'll send you a list of all the stuff that it's going to be. And, and again, you'll, you'll have plenty of time to change your mind or to, to commit to it, whatever. Um, but yeah, I absolutely anybody who's doing marketing as a service should ultimately have some form of comments. I, I really do think that within about two years, maybe three co-managed IT services, it's not going to be special. It's just going to be another piece of the pie. It's it's kind of similar to two years ago, three years ago. We suddenly MSP. Oh, look, you're a cloud based MSP. You can do cloud stuff, too. It's going to be the same thing. Now you're an MSP. Of course you do cloud and you also do on premise. So anyway, so like I said, I hope if you're interested, let me know. If not, I'll obviously take your thousand dollars as well next year. Again, like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not stopping my free community based support. I'm not going to use Facebook just to drill sales of the product. I got one reputation. I want to try to keep it as, as free as I can. Uh, a couple of things I just thought I'd add at the end is uh, just some books that I found really interesting over the past couple of years. Uh, and that'll be, this will be uh, emailed 
with you guys. Um, and then finally, give me some feedback. Uh, anything you and and even if if whether it's the the what I'm doing in terms of communicating to you guys, or uh, if you see better ways for us to do it, whatever, um, I, I'd love to get some feedback and uh, would absolutely absolutely enjoy it. So, any other questions or anything like that? Randy, you're in. <laughs> Suck. I mean, good glad you're. Okay, I'm not hearing any other questions. Uh, again, within the next day or so, I will email all participants uh, both the presentation we just did along with a flyer that will better describe. Just email me if you're interested in taking part. Uh, please join the Facebook group, regardless of whether you want to take advantage of this uh, program or not. Uh, just It's a good group, and it, it seems to be a, a, on the upswing. And um, thank you all very much. And probably have another one. May not be till uh, January, uh, but the next one's going to be really about that proposition, the value proposition. Thanks. Have a great holiday, everybody. Bye.